Everyone. I hope everyone has enjoyed the selection of talks today at Hashi Talks Canada today. I definitely have enjoyed it myself. Today, I'll be giving you an insight into my team experience with Terraform Enterprise, specifically our story on how we have dealt with workspaces at scale and what it has taught us about automation. So just to preface my talk, that opinions expressed here are solely my own and do not express the views of my or views or opinions of my employer. And also note that these workflows that are being presented today I will do only apply for projects that my team at SRCA works at and do not apply to the whole of Samsung Electronics. So just a brief introduction about myself. My name is Xiun. I'm a senior cloud operations engineer here at Samsung R&D Canada based in Vancouver, BC. I'm part of the cloud operations team and I'm primarily responsible for some of the shared services within our cloud operations team. I've been working in software and operations for the last 14 years or so in numerous organizations, small and big. I grew in Malaysia and studied and worked in London. And I've been in beautiful British Columbia for the past nine years or so. If you have any further questions or comments about this talk, you can also reach me at my Twitter handle or LinkedIn. So you might be wondering what is Samsung R&D Canada, or as we like to call ourselves, SRCA. SRCA is part of the Global Research and Development Division within the larger Samsung Electronics Corporation. Our team here is based in Vancouver, BC. Um, we are just next door to Emily Carr University. And we manage the software engineering and technical operations for various cloud services of Samsung Electronics, including uh, B2B Knox, uh, Samsung Pay, and Samsung IoT. Our teams here in Vancouver are not the only ones that work on those services, though. We collaborate with various other Samsung engineering teams across the whole wide world. So just to clarify here, when I speak about Terraform Enterprise, so TFE for short here, I'm referring to the self-hosted version of Terraform Cloud. Just keep that in mind when everything that I speak about workspace and TFE today also applies to TFC. Over here at Samsung, we have been using Terraform Enterprise as a key tool in our DevOps workflow. TFE has helped to move our DevOps culture forward with features like a friendly web UI, inbuilt workflows, and Sentinel policies. All of this has helped both automate our ops task and enable developers to dive into infrastructure as code with Terraform. So what is TFE workspace? And why is it so crucial to our workflow? So let's just be clear here. There is also another feature in Terraform CLI that is used to create workspaces. That is not where we are speaking about today. We are instead speaking about workspaces in terms of workspaces used in TFE or, TF or TFC. By the official HashiCorp definition, a workspace is how TFC or TFE organizes infrastructure. A workspace contains your actual TF state file, which holds definition to all your cloud resources. It has configurations about how your Terraform workflow runs. It has variables that you want to set. Also controls how you integrate it with your Git repo and much, much more. In other words, a workspace is in TFE is the heart of your infrastructure. So what were the biggest challenges when one wants to manage TFE workspaces at scale? What do you do when you have a huge number of workspaces? At the time when we first started using TFE, we already knew we have a lot of workspaces that needed to be defined. But we want to manage these workspaces at scale and in code. During the early days of our adoption, there were some difficulties in managing our workspaces at scale and in code. The Terraform provider that, you, that we can use to define all TFE resources, including workspaces, was still in early release. It was missing some key features at the time. In addition, we were still at Terraform 0 0.11. So any path to dynamically maintain the workspaces, it can get very complicated without those language constructs such as loops and conditionals. Then we had to handle the key question. How do we handle these workspaces at scale? When managing a scale for large, I mean, very, very large number of workspaces, how do we do that? Simple enough, it could be define all the workspaces in a single TS state file under a single workspace. The big issue here is that the solution is that a single TF state can only take so many resources. In, in addition, HashiCorp's best practice states that you should not make a TF state too large. 
And again, the last thing you want to have is a Terraform plan or apply taking minutes or hours to complete. Which then brought to our next big challenge. If you have defined workspace in Terraform, how do you find the workspace to find the workspace? And how to find that workspace? So it can get very meta. It was a bit of a headache for us to think about this, how these workspaces get defined without getting into what this meme um, uh, demonstrates. But we press a bit and got initial version of workspace management solution up and running. In our first iteration of the solution, we and this is a solution that we still use to this day. We have a service defined the workspaces in YAML files. So this is um, all in code. Um, these will then be um, written in, uh, taken in by our CACD pipeline that will be processed by a custom Python command line tool that we wrote. As you can see here, each service defined in a single config file. Our objectives will automatically create the workspaces, one for environment for each workspace. Our custom Python command line would read these configs and then make direct REST API calls to TFE to generate the relevant workspaces. The custom Python script itself would also configure standard configurations like a default Terraform version, credentials to use, our back access, and so on. And finally, all this ran on our CI CD platform. Currently, this all runs on Circle CI Run um, itself. As a result of these efforts, we've noticed some key benefits. First of all, our TAP workspace setup was very seamless to our end users, the developers. So when developers wanted to start a new project that needed with TFA workspaces, all they did was create their config file in the Git repo, the pipeline generate their workspaces on the other end. But just like a duck, everything looks calm and efficient on the outside, but there's a lot, a lot of busy work underneath it. We are also able to keep our TFE workspaces all configured in the same manner. If we wanted to upgrade the Terraform version, we do it all from a single config file. And finally, because of all our TFE workspaces were defined in code and readable, we had full visibility to what's being integrated in TFE. In some instances, this was a point of contact or discussion between dev and ops on what environments that a particular service may require. But we also noticed issues in this workspace. First, we had scaling issues. This time that we do a change, our pipeline re-reads all the configs and applies it on all workspaces, regardless whether something has changed. This is great if you want to ensure that manual changes are reverted, but it had a, a, a large amount of API calls being pushed towards TFE. Another issue that we have to play catch up to all new features to TFE, especially when it came to workspaces. So if we wanted to take advantage of a new configuration in the workspace, we would have to update our Python script to handle it. And finally, we had very large uh, clone maintenance. I mean, yes, we added unit test. Our teams all know Python, but it's still another custom piece of code that we have to maintain. And this prompted us to think of the next stage to our workspace management pipeline. As we looked into how we fix these issues with our workspace management, some things have changed since our early years with TFE. First, our teams are more familiar with TFE, including the runs, the plans, and the applies, and so on. The Terraform provider for TFE has vastly improved with a full set of TFE resources that it now supports. We obviously now have loops and conditionals from the latest version of Terraform. TFE now has run triggers to allow us to link multiple workspaces together. And there are now custom TFE workflows that can be driven exclusively by the API. All that helped us move our workspace management to the next stage. So as you can see here, we had decided to go back and define all our workspaces in Terraform call. So again, we have all Terraform workspaces that we use to define resources in the cloud. We define all of these Terraform code, all these Terraform workspaces in code under a workspace category. This is all to avoid overloading a single workspace. So we instead broke it apart to several workspaces, which I would call them workspace categories. But note, this is a term that we use. This is not a feature that Terraform Hashicorp TFE uses. Of course, the conundrum comes then: which workspace do we find these workspace categories? Well. We have one workspace to rule them all. A meta workspace just defined the workspace categories. Again, this is a term that we use, not a term that TFE uses. We stopped there 
by defining this workspace manually. We set up this meta workspace directly on the TFE web UI. It's a one-time operation, and we would normally not update it that frequently. So as you can see, we define all our workspace in Terraform code. This eliminated the overhead with custom scripting. In addition, we split our workspace definitions, or as I call it, sharding the workspaces. This helps to eliminate the possibility of overloading our workspaces, and as mentioned, with too many resources. A great benefit to defining it all in Terraform code now is that changes will only be done on actual resources and attributes that needed to be changed. This helps reduce the number of API calls that we would make to TFE. With trigger runs, we can help automate the changes to the workspaces and bubble up the relevant workspaces. One example being if we wanted all workspaces to have a new variable, we just update the meta workspace and have the trigger runs update the relevant linked workspaces. Finally, our meta workspace is managed manually as a one-time setup. Note the meta workspace itself is defined in Terraform and is linked to a Git repo, but the workspace configs like the way it runs, integration with, with, of, with Git are managed all in the TFE web UI. Just a disclaimer here that this workflow is still in progress. We are using it for new workspaces. We are still heavily relying on our version one of the pipeline, but we are already starting migration to this new V2 of the pipeline. We have learned some lessons how we approach automation during our journey in TFE workspace management. First, you can't automate everything. There is a point where the return is just not worth it. A point to follow that certain seed or starting resources can start initially manually, just like our meta workspace. The other lesson we learned is to keep our tooling in automation consistent. Yes, a custom scripting gets us a quick win, just like our first version of the pipeline. But long term, if the goal is for low overhead and lower maintenance, one should try to use convention and tools that are already familiar with the team. There are obvious exceptions to this, but if your tooling works well, why add another complication? Finally, this is more of an appreci appreciation than a lesson. We really value the features that Plaraform provided to us. Our initial version of the, of the pipeline could have been drastically improved if we added uh, features in our Python script to selectively only change what needed to be changed. But why reinvent the wheel when Terraform already does this? The ability of Terraform to detect changes that are needed and only change that, that's a valuable feature to us that made us use Terraform not only for cloud infrastructure management, but for things like they see TFA workspaces, we use it for pipeline management, single sign-on, and so on. So, this is the end of my talk and our journey in automating the management of our Terraform Enterprise setup. Reminder that everything I mentioned here could also be applied to Terraform Cloud in theory. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to listen to my talk. And I'd also like to thank HashiCorp for giving me the opportunity to present our story. And the one last thing I'd like to add is that Samsung R&D Canada is currently hiring for multiple positions. Please do check out our website for more information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shun. I love that talk. Uh, the TFE provider and your journey to getting all that stuff mapped up is uh, something that I think a lot of people are on the fence about. Um, so I'm sure that many people will be able to take away some serious, some serious lessons and next step with that. So thanks for sharing with thank us you. today. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Um,